No nonsense gin drinking. All gin, no nonsense. Hello gin lovers, welcome back. Old Freeman here and today my friends, we have a little treat for you. For this is one that's been recommended by quite a few of my subscribers now. This one pops up in the recommendations very, very regularly. So my friends, let me introduce you to Jawbox Classic Dry Gin. Now this one, I have to confess, I know absolutely nothing about. Nothing about it whatsoever. So to be honest, I have very little to say about it. So I suggest we crack on and I find out something about it so I can so I can talk about it. However, before we do, I have had a flurry of new Patreons this week. So I need to thank, I've got to, I've had to write them down here, Mr. Jeffrey Pittman, Mr. Gareth Charman and Kurt Muller. You are all supporters of the show. You are gentlemen and I salute every damn one of you. In fact, hang on a second. One for Jeffrey, one for Gareth, and one for Kurt. Also, before we start, I must just warn everybody that uh, there's a bit of a, a, a bit of a problem today, a slight sort of uh, technical issue in that um, I've forgotten to put a belt on, so there's a very high risk my trousers may fall down at some point during the video. So. If that happens, I don't know what I'm going to do, to be honest. I usually leave the mistakes in on this show, as you know. However, this one could well get me banned from YouTube. So um, I guess I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. Anyway, on with the show, my friends. So let's find out a little bit about this gin on the old website, shall we? And as you can tell, this gin is from Ireland. In fact, it's from Northern Ireland, but my Northern Ireland is not very good. So I'm just going to do my standard kind of general leprechaun-y kind of accent. Greatness through graft and craft. We're all about the detail, about the obsessive care and fanatical focus on quality. In practice, that means doing things the hard way and not taking the easy option. Some might call that stubborn, unnecessary, uncompromising. We agree. Except, oh shit, I mean, I fell over. <laughs> Except we call it character. In making and distilling the spirit, we use a unique combination of selected botanicals, including local Belfast Black Mountain Heather, and we employ the traditional, the time-honoured, the time, oh god, the traditional time-honoured method. So, we've got juniper berries, we've got Black Mountain Heather, we've got coriander seed, cassia quills, angelica root and orris root, quibebs, lemon peel, cardamom licorice root, and grains of Paradise. Okay, I think the accent's slipping a bit there. I sort of held on to it as long as I could, but that sounds to me, you know, sounds like a pretty good gin. That they've got all the sort of the classic botanicals in there. There's nothing kind of stand out and unique, apart from the heather. The heather, that's you don't get that very often in gins, but I think this could be one of the standard sort of core gins, like your Sipsmiths, like your Beef Eaters, like your Tanquerays, and like your Plymouths. However, that is quite a mighty uh, horde to stand up to. So my friends, I say we get the old top off and and well, see if it's any good. <laughs> By the way, I don't know if you noticed this little tag here. It says win a trip to Chicago. So I thought brilliant, you know, this, is, this could be win-win. So I, you know, sometimes you enter a competition. I don't enter competition very often, but sometimes you enter and you just think, or you buy a lottery ticket or something. You just think, you know what? I've got a funny feeling this is the week. I had a funny feeling this was going to be the one, right? So I went on the website. All you have to do is enter the code there. Uh, I was all excited. I was revved up. I was literally, you know, about sort of imagining what it would be like in Chicago. And it turns out the bloody competition's closed last year. So thanks a lot for that, Jawbox. Get old Freeman's hopes up and just dash them away. Anyway, I won't bore you with my woes and troubles. In fact, let's get rid of that. It's annoyed me. So just check the trousers. They seem to be firmly in position at the moment. I'll give them a tug up just in case. Oh, there we go. Oh, just bang my knee on the desk. Ow. So so, on with the cork test. Here we go. Does that have a squeak? Christ alive, I can barely... Oh, hang on. Oh, there's no cork. <laughs> it's, it's a failed cork test because there's no cork in there. That's never happened before. What should we call it? That's a, uh, a defaulted cork test, I think, or deferred. I don't know. Never mind, we'll gloss over that bit. I'll probably edit it out. So, let's get some in the glass for the old sniff test, shall we? Right. In she goes. By the way, let's just quickly do I must just say, oh my, oh, hang on. No, 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 I can't. I'll, I'll wait for her. Oh, 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 man alive. Oh, it's God. I, I'll tell you what I was going to tell. I, what was I going to say? I, I'll tell you that in a minute, but I just can't ignore that smell. I cannot ignore it. I, I hadn't even lifted it up. 
from the desk. And it's one of those ones that sort of drifts up like this, like a sort of a seductive genie, if you can imagine such a thing. Do you know what it kind of reminds me of? This is going to be a really weird analogy, so bear with me on this one. But you know that bit in the Jungle Book when Car the snake is going, trust in me. God, that was out of tune, wasn't it? Trust in me. No, tr trust it. Trust in me. I can't, I can't get the tune, it's too early in the morning. But you know that bit when he's saying trust in me, and he sort of, and Mowgli becomes all sort of, uh, sort of funny eyed and in a trance like that. That, my friends, if you could imagine that in a gin aroma, that's what it's like. It's kind of just going, yes, trust in. Hello there, Mr. Freeman. Trust in me. Let me get you, let me put a bit of the Irish charm on you. Come along and drink and sniff me gin. Or something along those lines. That's the best way I can describe it. Anyway, it's kind of. Thick with, sort of, oh, heavy with the juniper, like like the, uh, what did we have the other week that was really good, um, uh, mermaid gin, um, which was also like the Brooklyn gin, that thick, sort of, um, um, uh, junipery, sort of, oh, like, it's like you can sort of, uh, it's almost like you can pick it up, it's thick and you can cut it, but at the same time, kind of a lovely sort of, oh, sparkly spiciness as well, and, and oh my god. God, my friends, this is going to be a good one. I can't wait any longer. I'm going to have to get the tonic in there. We should definitely be trying it neat. Uh, what is the ABV on here? What's the ABV? I can never find a bloody thing on here. Hello? Hello, dear. AB 43%. 43%. Excellent. Excellent. It's usually around 42, isn't it? So I've got no problem when it goes higher. So that's quite enough talking. Someone had, uh, someone criticised me the other day for they, on one of my um, videos. They put a comment below saying, excuse me, could you please um, dispense with all the nonsense? There's no need for it. And I'm really annoyed. I, I just want you to try the gin. Well, that person is clearly on the wrong channel for although it is called No Nonsense Gin Reviews, as we all know, it is mostly nonsense. I should probably change the name. Anyway, my friends, let's, that's ironically more nonsense than usual today, but let's get some in the old mouth, shall we? So I say to you, I'll tell you that thing I was going to tell you about Jawbox in a minute, but for now, I say to you, Jawbox Classic Dry Gin. That's what it is, isn't it? Yeah, Classic Dry Gin. I say to you, a cheers. Oh, oh. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh, I got a little bit of aftertaste as well there. That was a, a real delay, that one. Honestly, honestly, gin lovers. Oh, I've had a good run recently with the uh, mermaid the other week, which is amazing. I, I thought to myself at some point, I'm going to have a bad one soon. I'm just going to have to make it. I haven't done a negative review for a while, but as you know, I'm always honest. If there's a negative one, I'll bloody well tell you. That, that, I'm going to have to have another go. Mm. Gee! <laughs> uh, right, okay, let me condense this into words for you. It's not quite as it smells. It's not quite as thick with juniper. There's a lot of juniper in there, but it's not a boatload in there. I'd say the perfect amount plus about 10, maybe 20%. But what is there, what is there is heavy and thick and kind of just concentrating and sort of zizzed up a little bit. But it's kind of backed up and they've got this warm sort of mm, lovely, slightly humming, spicy sort of base. It's got a bit of a sort of a body to it, you know. Something else. It's got, you know, it's got balls for want of a slightly more delicate uh, description. But honestly, but the, the, but the, ah, hang on. Huh. But after that, it kind of, it kind of sparkles a little bit in the mouth. Got like pfft, glitters a little bit with a beautiful sort of ah, oh, just perfect like like a dusting of citrus and it, but it's kind of like those two flavors are the opposite end of flavor scale but it's kind of like they've sort of fiddled about and adjust them and they've suddenly just gone kunk like that and just locked together and it's like they're sort of the dna of each has been kind of fused together this is getting a little bit deep and bizarre but i think that makes sense i'm pretty sure that i'm, I'm in fact I'm, I'm absolutely positive that makes sense but then marrying this all together and kind of offsetting it in a way is a wonderful, I've got a, a dry leaf down there, not sure, I'm not sure if you can hear that, it's kind of ruining my sound quality. For those of you who don't know, this studio's in my garage, so when the door opens, all manner of stuff blows in, including dry leaves, and a great big spider this morning as well. But marrying it all together is a wonderful and glorious and kind of indulgent sweetness. Not too much, not too much, just like a, a thin veil, a thin sugary veil. <laughs> but put all together, I tell you what, it's a joy. It's an, uh, uh. 
Oh man, I tell you what, I could, I could quite happily sit here and just, uh, well I wouldn't sit, I haven't got a, a seat, I could stand here and just plow through, not the whole bottle, I think I'd be um, probably need to seek uh, some sort of help if I did that <laughs> this time in the morning, but I tell you what, this evening, me and Narissa are going to be smashing through this, I guarantee it. So, let's try it neat, shall we? See how we get on. I reckon it's going to be a gin and tonic one, this one. But you never know, you never know. Let's try it. <laughs> oh, that's a different animal altogether. You're getting bags of spice. It's just like, tastes like a super spicy gin. Not like a hot spicy, more like sort of herbaceous spicy. I, it talked about the heather in the gym. I, to be honest... I have to tell you, I have no idea what heather tastes like. I have never seen a, a, a hedge of heather and thought to myself, yep, yeah, I'm going to chow down on that. But whatever it is, it seems to be working. But again, yeah, I reckon that's definitely one to be enjoyed with the tonic because it's just a rainbow of flavours rather than just a... If you like, you know, neat gym, give it a go, certainly. But personally, again, I'm sticking with the old tonic. By the way, that thing I wanted to tell you earlier about the jaw box. What is a jaw box? You probably think to yourself, what the bloody hell is a jaw box? Well, I conducted a little bit of research, you'll be pleased to hear, and apparently a jaw box is um, a, a kitchen sink, an Irish kitchen sink from, um, from, from yesteryear. I know that's not particularly specific yesteryear, but sometime in the, in the, in the not too distant past. Um, it was a big sink which everyone would kind of congregate around in the kitchen and you could wash everything in there. The crockery, the knives and forks, the children, and that's not even a joke. They used to just wash everything in there. And apparently everyone used to just hang around it and just have a bit of a chat. It was like the sort of um, the modern day version, no, the old day version of, of the water cooler. You see my friends, not just in reviews, education as well on this show. You are welcome. So, 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 let's bring this all down a second, shall we? Let's, let's talk about the sordid issue of price, because that, I'm telling you now, it's definitely one of the core, what you call a core gin, it's not a novelty gin, it's not got anything weird and wonderful in there, but um, has, is it, so it's got some sort of, oh bloody hell, it's got some rather reasonably priced um, competitors in that market, i.e. Beefy to Sitsmith and Tanqueray, who all hover around the low £20 mark. I mean, Beefy is even down to, I forget what it is now, I haven't bought it, bought it for a while. It's like sort of £16. So then, it is a smaller distillery, so I don't mind paying a little bit more for it. However, my friends, it is a little bit on the pricey side. It's pushing my top budget for a smaller distillery at £38.95. Pence, which works out of $53.66 pence and 44 euros and 30 pence. No, not, hang on, what am I talking about pence? For 53, $53.66 cents and 44 euros and 30 cents. And that, it, oh, I'm glad it's coming under the 40, but personally, it is pushing it a little bit, but however, however, it's a minor gripe, a minor blip on this otherwise flawless review, because I think even at that sort of slightly higher price, I do. You know I don't mind. I don't mind because that I just genuinely loved and really, really enjoyed. So, guys, the summary, the conclusion, if you will, of this scientific experiment, um, but which it technically is, I suppose. I have been doing this channel for quite a while now, as you know, and I usually, I very often end the videos like this. But that, as I say, I had a funny feeling. I had a strange, peculiar feeling that it wasn't going to be good. I don't know why, because it was completely unjust. It was just a genuine pleasure. And I tell you what, I always say, you can tell when love and passion and a lot of thought has gone into a gin. And you can tell when it hasn't. And you, I just, I don't, as I said, I didn't know anything about the distillery, anything about the people that make it. But I tell you what, if you're watching this video, they're probably not, but you never know. Um, you should be absolutely proud of yourself. And if you haven't heard of this, like, like I hadn't, you, Prom honestly, promise me you'll go and buy some. I think, I think it is available kind of beyond the UK. I might be wrong, but have a look out for it. And if you do see it, I guarantee you if you're a gin lover, which I assume you are if you're watching this show, you will absolutely adore this. And it's definitely got to have a place on your shelf. And I say to the Jawbox Distillery, if that's what the dist distillery is called, I don't know. Keep up the good work, my friends.
So guys, thank you very much for watching today. If you've enjoyed this video, if it's enriched your life and changed you as a person, then please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Press the like button on the video and the little bell icon so you get notified when all my new videos come out. And if you want to support the show like good old um, Jeffrey Pittman, Gareth Charman and Kurt Miller did, then please head over to my Patreon page or click that join button below the video. But until next time, guys, you know the drill. Take care, stay safe. Thank you to all my patrons and members and keep, one most importantly of all, keep drinking the gin.